And uh, one of my jobs is to ensure that we connect basically to the outside world. Uh, we deliver innovation, and innovation is defined uh, 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 very specifically. Uh, 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 in fact, if you want just to, to, to look into it, it's a successful exploitation of knowledge and technologies. Because in universities, if we produce a lot of good ideas, but we keep them to ourselves, then they are of no benefit to either the industry or the wider society. And one of my roles is to ensure that uh, this bridge, I guess, is built. Okay, so uh, like Gudrun, I was a bit puzzled by the title, uh, and I thought immediately that, uh, uh, I mean, I was English, I don't know, but that uh, breaking boundaries was a bit of an act of violence. Uh, 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 so I looked it up a little bit, but then I found uh, definitions or, or basically uh, indications that creation, creativity, maybe involve that act of destruction and as basically a, a very uh, um, keen former uh, legal player, I could subscribe to this because uh, when I was a kid, uh, basically a lot of my creation involved destruction of the previous uh, vehicle. So maybe there is some truth into it after all, that if you want to keep creating, maybe you have to keep destructing and breaking things a little bit. Uh, I don't think it's fully true, however, but, and what I'm going to make the case for here today is much more the fact that uh, what I'm trying to do is maybe to push these boundaries uh, uh, and to redefine them uh, uh, altogether because uh, we need to dare to do things differently and we, dare, we need to dare to do things which are new uh, uh, as well. And uh, quite often I think universities are, are, are maybe perceived or described as ivory towers, these places where maybe knowledge or it used to be the case, uh, uh, is uh, um, probably very uh, high and with a degree of elevation. But for many people outside of the university, they are also, uh, I suspect, places that they dread to engage with, they don't quite know what to engage with. And I think that one of the things we need to, to consider today is, is how this knowledge can be free, how can it be made uh, accessible and available. And universities, in a sense, need to adapt. Uh, to the environment they serve and also the environment in which uh, they live. Uh, you can look at it uh, uh, from a moral point of view, but you can also be very pragmatic about it. We're effectively uh, asked uh, to think about that. Uh, uh, if you look uh, um, basically at the research, research excellence for framework, sorry, uh, uh, which was released at the end of 2014, one of the key uh, uh, basically assessments uh, element was on impact. How have you used some, or how have you produced knowledge that basically has been uh, uh, useful to society or to industry? And, and in my faculty, we submitted about 19 such study cases, for example. In my group, I think we contributed three. And yes, some of the law source work went into this, and we illustrated how a research body of work, which spanned about 10 years, <coughs> turned into basically. Uh, design guidelines which were used on an engine such as the Trent XWB, which is the engine which will find its way on the next Airbus A350, for example. So these are things uh, we need to think about. But if you look at EPSRC, the Engineering and Physical Science Research Council, essentially a government funding arm for research, uh, and if you go back a few years, uh, I'm not 100% uh, certain of the exact date, but it's there or thereabout. You can see what basically even Scable, the then business secretary, said about a special fund called the Impact Acceleration Account, in which he basically uh, put monies available uh, to uh, universities such that they could truly participate to basically the economy. In other words, we were incentivized in reaching out and in making sure that uh, not only the research we did uh, was of very high quality, but it could help support, I would say, uh, what one could call UK PLC. Okay. Uh, about one year ago, this gentleman, Joe Ito, and if you look him up, uh, you will probably find his talk most uh, uh, easily, also made a, a similar case. Now, he's a lot more famous than I am. He's the director of the MIT Media Lab. And what he challenged was the fact that um, uh, there is a say in academia which goes along the lines of publish or perish. 
And very often, academics might have seen the uh, publication of their work in a learned journal as the final deliverable, uh, the end of their uh, uh, activity. And Jolito, in this talk, which happened, give or take, one year to this day, said, no, it's not like that. What you need to think about is deploy and perish. And Jolito works in IT, and therefore the word deploy meant reaching out and making his software or his technology available to others as I understand it. However, he also went along with the, the fact that simply publishing inside our community and stopping the research there was not sufficient uh, uh, anymore. And he also indicated in strong words the need to do things basically in a new uh, uh, way. And on that line, he insisted on the benefits, if you want, of agility, uh, collaboration, and also adaptability. And uh, we heard from Goodrum that it was important to be an ownist. Well, he then talked about the fact that he wanted to be a now noist, as in, you know, you didn't need to try and basically look too far forward. You just needed to make sure that you did now became available and contributed to your society. And he made the case too that with the internet, the cost of doing research uh, on the web or in IT had pretty much gone down to zero. Now, I work in aerospace, this requires quite a big kit, but is there evidence that we can do this in other areas? Well, yes, we can. Uh, he also gave an example of the Changzhen uh, open, basically mobile phone manufacturing uh, capability where young, basically, uh, uh, kids can go and build their own uh, tools. He also mentioned about progress made in genetics where well, basically it is very much possible to manufacture what you need in-house. So either are there things there that we can learn from in, in my uh, area of work? Okay, so uh, talking about uh, building bridges now. We've broken things, we've seen that others have gone along the lines uh, that I'm proposing here today. Well, let me be clear, we are not necessarily challenging the fact that research quality uh, is key. After all, publications are likely to remain our traditional capital for the time being. Uh, however, we might want to look at research from basically a more holistic manner. When I started in Nottingham 10 years ago, we used to write a little proposal, send it to UKSRC, we got a research fellow or a PhD studentship for it, we did our research, published a paper, and that was the end of it. Now we need to look at things in a different manner. So when Lawrence visited me, you might have seen this on one of my boards in my office. So now in the past, we used to write our proposals here. We used basically to do the research, wrote the paper, and attend it there. What we need to think about are greater ideas, which start quite a long way forward. We may want to seek inspiration from a number of well-known, uh, basically, innovation centers. And we also need to start to think from the world go about the impact, the exploitation that some of this research is going to have and maybe take it quite a long way forward to make sure that the research doesn't end in my office, in a box, or in a government journal uh, alone. And the case I guess I'm making here is that being application driven, understanding what you may want to deliver at the end doesn't make you a bad academic. What I'm suggesting here is that instead of simply looking at the nuts and bolts of an activity, yeah, and being a specialist in them, you might simply use uh, 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 or see them as basically tools that enable you to deliver uh, 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 basically an end journey or maybe take you there to, to, to your end destinations. And more importantly, we also need to ensure as academics that we don't become slaves to these nuts and bolts, that we actually dare to choose chuck them away and reassemble them uh, in a creative uh, uh, pattern uh, again. Uh, the next slide is quite important because if you look at this, and I will ask you to look at it in a very uh, simplistic manner here today, a lot of the research we do in academia happens here. But industry really takes it on, or society when it is there, and in the middle you've got this so-called gap, valley of death, where nothing happens. Research has not been pushed sufficiently forward or uh, in put in context so that, so that society or industry can uh, well, What I'm suggesting here is that breaking boundaries in my area is probably not being constrained by one's discipline, 
but being able to see beyond these disciplines, beyond able, being able to make these uh, connectivity seek others' input. Because at the end of the day, innovation, and this is not my point, it's a case made by the Institute for the Future in Palo Alto, innovation often takes place at the margins, where disciplines, where applications meet. I can spend a lot of time doing fluid mechanics. There is a vast body of fluid mechanics. My contribution associated is going to be small. But if I work with other people who have a need maybe for a fluid mechanics solution, together we stand a chance of actually delivering a far greater benefit for society. And these interactions are essentially key, that's the case I'm making, to basically delivering uh, uh, innovation. Last month, I was, uh, uh, yeah. Last month, I was at the conference uh, 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 in France called the More Electric Aircraft Conference. In case you've missed it, the 787, the latest Boeing Dreamliner, has one order of magnitude more electrical power available than at normal aircraft. That's quite a game uh, changer. Uh, and there was a real sense of excitement at that conference because we had electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, aerospace engineers, all converging to make things happen. Uh, there was also basically opportunities, new grounds, to do things differently, and for universities to take the lead, as we were ending a cycle of aircraft, basically, uh, uh, systems, and embarking on something that was truly uh, uh, different. But this is only possible if we actually connect and, and, and work together. And in the institutes, that's pretty much what we're trying to do. We're trying to position the institutes to sit across and on top of a number of research silos. All of these are research centers. Uh, I talked to somebody who was in the business school where you're here. Uh, uh, we are here in the mathematical sciences. They are somewhere uh, here. But if they all basically combine and feed into our activity, we can certainly uh, uh, deliver and come closer to the models that Joy Lito uh, uh, has proposed in the talk he gave. So there is real opportunity here that we can reconcile the traditional values that, is, that are found in each of these individual research groups with working together, connecting, and essentially doing things uh, uh, differently. And I guess that's uh, uh, what uh, I'm making a case for here. In the uh, institute, we have a current project called Innovate, which aims to do that. On that project, I have mechanical engineer, aeronautical engineer, electrical engineer, psychologists, mathematicians, communication specialists. And they all work together. Why? Because at the end of the day, you are not particularly concerned with how the aircraft is made. We want to go from A to B. And by getting all of these guys to work together, we exploit the excellence that we have inside each of the research silo, but we combine it. And in many ways, we give them more freedom. Why? Because suddenly they can work with others. They are not solely dependent on their own boat and that's to deliver the end product uh, uh, we need to deliver. Uh, that could be seen, this freedom in working together, an oxymoron, in academia, but this is, it's actually quite uh, a strength uh, here. And moving forward, and as part of projects such as these, instead of simply talking about aerospace as an aircraft or an engine system, we might want to rethink mobility as a whole. And at Nottingham, there is a project called Impetus, which is actually uh, uh, aiming uh, to do that. So in this project, we question not simply the technology, uh, that goes into an aircraft, we could question not simply the all we fly, but we try to look into the whole mobility as a system. We try to think about how do we carry and deliver an entire journey in practice, because at the end of the day, this is what uh, you are all interested in. So in conclusion, uh, um, though aerospace is not the internet, and we don't have development costs which are zero, it's quite expensive still, uh, a parallel does exist between the premises made by Amanda, the previous speaker, but also Joy Ito, in that the opportunity to do things differ differently by connecting uh, certainly uh, uh, exists. And the challenge is to balance the current needs we have, we need to deliver to support the industry, we need to keep Mr. Cable happy, 
but we also need to take opportunities for the funding we get to actually project uh, ourselves forward. And these two needs, between the quality and between the delivery, are not at all. Uh, it's actually quite a good thing to reconcile them. So the short uh, 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 term delivery being balanced with a longer term vision is something that probably uh, is part of breaking boundaries in my area. It's maintaining that balance, leave it, leading that dual life that is uh, quite important. I will leave it with one quote which I left on um, basically one of the trees outside. Um, coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Uh, working together is success. And if you want to know who that quote is from, there's some enthusiastic uh, opinions here, it's Henry Ford, so it goes back quite a long way. Thank you very much.